Welcome to Magic Arcanum, I'm Ryan Gomez. Behind the scenes is Nicole Burdick, and we're so glad you're here because it's story time. Story time. We say that a lot around here, but what does it actually mean? Where do these stories come from? And how do we decide which ones are worth sharing? Well, to start with, Magic the Gathering is a massively popular trading card game with 30 years of history, and while each new release typically takes place in a different location or plane, there is a larger narrative that ties it all together. You can play the game without following this, but here on Magic Arcanum, we try to connect the cards to the events happening in the story to give players more context for their spells and to perhaps inspire them to create a flavorful deck that showcases their favorite character or plane. Take Omnath, for example. Some people see him in March of the Machine and realize this is a tragic end to his character arc, while others don't know this is the fifth card depicting this character, or they don't care. There is no right or wrong way to enjoy magic, but if you think you'd have more fun following heroes and villains as they battle it out across the multiverse, then you should probably start by bookmarking the official story page, which I have in the description down below. Wizards of the Coast has experimented with how best to share the stories behind their cards over the years, and things may change again in the future, but for right now, it works like this. At minimum, each of the four major sets released during the year is accompanied by a written story, which is divided up into individual chapters. A portion of these chapters make up what we call the main story, and another portion is used to tell the side stories. The main story follows the major characters as they deal with the conflict held within the set. For example, in the recent March of the Machine main story, we saw planeswalkers like Chandra and Ren fight against Elish Norn on New Phyrexia. The side stories typically look more at non-Planeswalker characters and events that might influence the main story, but aren't directly a part of it. Again, looking back at March of the Machine, the side stories took us to some of the various planes being invaded by the Phyrexians, where we saw Errant help bring down Atraxa and Vadrock destroy Luca. You can read all of these chapters for free right on the website as they are published. Usually we get one or two a day for one or two weeks leading up to the start of card previews for the latest set. It used to go the other way. We'd get card previews first and then be given the story chapters, but they realized the cards often revealed the surprises held in the stories. So now we do it this way. And I think that this has made the story a bit more exciting and it builds up the anticipation around seeing those matching cards. If you don't have the time or desire to read these story chapters, you can still get a pretty good sense of what's going on in a set by looking at these story spotlight cards. These are a series of cards within the set that have a special identifying line of text along their bottom edge. And the idea is that they show, or spotlight, the most important characters and events from the set's story. The spotlights first appeared with Kaladesh in 2016, and since then, the number in each set has varied, going as low as 3 in Rivals of Ixalan, and all the way up to almost 30 in War of the Spark. Now, the story spotlight cards are supposed to match up with the written story and serve as a sort of abridged version of the set's pivotal moments, but they haven't always been successful in that. Most notably for Ikoria, we had story spotlight cards, but no free online story. Instead, players were asked to purchase an actual novel, and there were significant differences between what the cards showed and what the book told us happened. Presently, though, things are in pretty close alignment, with minor discrepancies getting discussed in the Mustache Minute segment of my recap videos, so go check those out if you haven't already. While there are specific story spotlight cards, each card in this set contributes to the story in its own way. The art on basic lands 
can help us visualize the story's setting, and the names of creatures and spells can help flesh out the factions that might be in conflict with each other here. And then, of course, you've got flavor text, which can appear as quotes or statements in italic print below the rules text. This also helps us understand what's happening and gives us some insight into characters' beliefs, actions, or general temperament with regards to stubborn field animals. For the record, I don't look like Bruce Tarl. Bruce Tarl looks like me. Anyway, there is one important distinction I want to make here, and that is the difference between story and lore. I see a lot of players use these terms interchangeably, and even I am guilty of that sometimes, but there is a difference, and I think it's worth getting into. Magic's story has a narrative structure to it. It is designed to take the player, or reader, on a ride, with each set having its own arc and a beginning, middle, and end. Now, the overall magic story continues onward and onward, never really ending, but that's fine. It is still a story in which characters perform actions at locations. Lore, on the other hand, is more like self-contained bits of trivia. It tells us facts about the multiverse without necessarily advancing the story in a meaningful way. The Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776. That is American lore. It's a fact. It's part of our history, and it has shaped our country for over 200 years now. But by itself, it's not a story. You can't say, the Declaration was signed in 76, the end. To make a story out of it, we need characters, like who signed it, and where. And then we get into the stuff like why and how. How did Nicolas Cage manage to steal the Declaration of Independence? Luke Skywalker blew up the Death Star in A New Hope. That is Star Wars lore. But how he wound up there and the friends he made along the way, that makes up the story we all know and love. Why is this important, Ryan? Well, when I talk about story time and the stories behind the cards, I'm talking about those official written stories with a narrative arc to them. This matters because we sometimes get supporting text or articles that provide additional lore, which can also be fun to know, but for me, it is not part of the story. Game creators have to be careful here because a lot of times we see them use lore as a substitute for story. Lore can add history and complexity to your world and make it feel lived in, but lore alone does not bring your reader along on any sort of journey. I don't want a list of random things I need to memorize in order to make characters and events feel connected. I am here to observe their adventures directly and to try to understand what they want and what they're willing to do to get it. For example, along with the main and side stories for March of the Machine, there was a post containing information about the set's legendary team-up cards. Most of these team-ups did not happen in the story, and so this article is the only source of additional information we have about these cards. And while the paragraphs here are canon, they don't really contribute to the story, at least in my eyes. The entry for Thalia and the Gitrog monster just confirms that the frog was hungry and had an easier time finding food with Thalia on his back. It even playfully suggests that when they run out of Phyrexians, the frog might consider eating Thalia. But we all know that won't happen. To me, this is just lore. It confirms a thing did happen, but there is no arc to it. It doesn't weave into the greater tapestry that is the magic story. And again, having additional lore is Fine, I like getting details about my favorite characters and locations, but I don't think it's fair to consider it to be part of the story. And that's why I don't usually cover it here on the channel. Remember, this channel was founded thanks to my love of card games. Growing up, I played a lot of them. Two of my other favorites were Star Wars and the original Versus system. The Star Wars game by Decipher managed to make a card out of virtually every frame of every movie. So you had all the vehicles, weapons, locations, and characters exactly as they appeared on screen. 
and from that you could attempt to recreate the stories you knew. The cards even rewarded you for this, putting Han and Chewie onto the Falcon or equipping Obi-Wan Kenobi with his own lightsaber would give you the power to control an entire location with just those few cards. Or you could explore the what-ifs. What if Obi-Wan's lightsaber found its way into the hands of Lando? What if Luke had piloted a Y-Wing during the trench run instead of an X-Wing? You could mix up these familiar elements and create entirely new stories every time you played. And not to get too into the weeds with Versus System, but in the comics, there are characters who are part of the Avengers, right? And they're not always active members. They're the reserves who get called up when a really big threat appears in the story. So in the game, these characters had an ability that basically let you play them as a resource, and then later on, you could move them out of your resources and recruit them to your team, just like when they get called up in the comics. It can be really satisfying to relive your favorite story moments from the screen or page in card form. You feel like an author empowered to change their fate with a stroke of your pen or a shuffle of your deck. But even if none of that appeals to you, it is still worth knowing at least some of the magic story because then you can predict what cards might be coming in future sets. You might be a player who only cares about the mechanics and finding cards to improve your chance of victory at FNM, and that's fine. But a general knowledge of the story can still help you. Back during Guilds of Ravnica, I noticed flavor text on a few cards referring to gods, and a mighty boar called Ilharg that was prophesized to raise the city to the ground. So I predicted we would see gods in the next set, War of the Spark, and was initially met with skepticism from some of my playgroup. As far as they knew, gods only appeared in sets that happened on Theros, or Amon Cat. Imagine their surprise when Ilharg and Four Eternals show up for the war. Their next question was, well, where's Hazaret? But again, if they had been following the story, they would know she evaded death during the Hour of Devastation, and so she had to be replaced here by the Razebor. It was a neat little payoff for those of us who had been paying attention, and moments like that have become some of my favorite over 25 some odd years of playing Magic and following the story. And Magic has all it needs to tell great stories. The multiverse is a wonderful location because it can be any location, from the sandy beaches of Ixalan to the towering metro of Ravnica to the wilds of Eldraine. Yet, despite this vast array of seemingly unconnected realms, we have characters that can move freely between distinct worlds and tie them together with the threads of conflict, discovery, creation, and even love. The aftermath for March of the Machine promises to take some of the attention off of Planeswalkers and share it with the game's legendary creatures. But even still, we have all the elements of a compelling story just waiting for us to start the first chapter by drawing our opening seven. The marriage between the cards and the story is one of Magic's greatest strengths. And if you enjoy that, you can find comics, art books, novels, Planeswalker guide articles, cinematic trailers, everything short of an animated Netflix show, all waiting to inspire your next deck. So what will it be? Will you help Elish Norn breach the multiverse? Will you rescue Vraska from her oil-slicked fate? Will Davriel show up and make everyone forget about this whole mess? Let me know down in the comments and then make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the great stories you'll only find here on Magic Arcane. We'll see ya.